right. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> um, yeah, so today's going to be a read video for our single reads, so our clarinet and sax players. Um, and I know that we have a few new people, so I'm just going to introduce myself <laughs> so that you know who's talking to you. I'm Anna. I play clarinet and saxophone, and I also run the Virtual Woodwind Academy, a summer program for adults with uh, Amanda, our uh, flute player. Um, and I've been getting a ton of questions about reeds this week. I think because the weather's changing. Um, I'm in Indiana, so it's been really weird. <laughs> and I've been getting like emails about reeds. I've been seeing a lot of posts about reeds. So um, when I was deciding what to talk about, I decided it was going to be a read video today. Um, yeah, so each week we go live in here uh, to post different videos for our flute, uh, clarinet, and sax players. And welcome! If you're here, feel free to introduce yourself in the comment or just um, if you haven't asked a question that you have about reads, and I'm going to try to talk about that today in our short little video. Okay, so we're going to be talking about how to fix your reads, which reads go good with uh, each mouthpiece, and basically try to solve the mystery of the read. <laughs> okay, so I've been thinking about how I'm going to do this video, and I'm going to do it from like the most basic read tips you need just to like make a good sound, like if you want to get really advanced into it. So I realized there's like three camps of people when it comes to reads. Um, there's like the people who just are going to pull out a read out of the box and play on it, and they're not going to work on it at all, and that's cool. Hi, Mike. Welcome. Um, and then there's the second group of people that wants to work on their reads like a little bit, um, just to kind of get it sounding good. And then there's like the third group of people that really like to go crazy <laughs> and, you know, just spend all their time on reads. I think I'm like a group two. <laughs> um, so uh, in terms of, so the first question I got was uh, like buying like your reads versus like if you want to make your own reads with like Kane. Um, so if you're a double reed player like bassoon or oboe, they generally at some point have to make their own reeds. Um, I do not. I just use commercial reeds um, just because that is what's easier for me. And I also just don't really <laughs> have time to do that. Or when you start making your own reeds, you need to buy a bunch of stuff. Like, um, so I just, I personally don't get into that. Um, but if you do, that is awesome. And also, there's different kinds of reeds. So we have cane reeds. You know, I have a whole box. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of boxes of reeds I brought for this discussion. So we have cane reeds, um, you know, which are just made out of cane. And then we also have plastic reeds. And there's various opinions on that. Um, I'm going to talk about it at the end. But first, let's go into the actual reed stuff. Okay. So problem with reeds. So especially when the weather changes, the reeds, um, you know, they can warp, um, they can sound not great. So uh, let's talk about the initial process of getting a reed. Okay, so this is like the beginner reed basics. So if you're a beginner and you're just trying to find um, a reed, uh, the most important thing is to be picking a reed that's like not too hard for you okay so if you're a beginner player on clarinet or sax i usually start my beginning students on two or two and a half regardless of the mouthpiece um so a really good way to do that let me see if i can share my screen here um okay i'm just gonna put this link in the chat i don't know if i can screen share it right now um yeah, so you can go, if you're looking for a specific, like, thinking of what kind of reed lines up with your mouthpiece and the material, you can go on the manufacturer's website um, and actually see, they'll tell you, like, what reed works. So I'm sharing this Van Joren chart, it's for saxophone mouthpieces, but a little, it'll literally say, like, what kind of box. Like, if you have a blue box, um, or a gray box, or a red box, um, depending on your mouthpiece, like, what strength will work. Um, so that would be the first step. Personally, for me, um, on clarinet, I'm using Van Doren V12s, um, three or three and a half, I'm kind of in between. On sax, I'm using three or three and a half Javas on alto. Um, on tenor, I'm using two and a halves. Um, 
Yeah, and I'm using a combination of like V16 or the ZZ Jazz or the Javas. I'm, I kind of just have a bunch of boxes that I'm rotating through. Um, and on bass clarinet, I do use plastic reeds, um, the Leger reeds, because I don't really have a lot of time to mess around <laughs> with the bass clarinet reeds. And sometimes they're sitting in a case, so they're warping a lot. Okay, now on to the nitty gritty stuff. So the first step of the reed, if you're a beginner, um, and again, I recommend just starting on a two or two and a half reed. So good brands are Van Doren, Rico, Diodario. I typically recommend the blue box reeds. Um, but it really doesn't matter if you're just starting out. You're just going to be wanting to make a sound and get used to your instrument. Um, so what you can do if you're trying to figure out what kind of reeds work is you can order the individual ones rather than like a whole box, you know, because this can get kind of expensive. You know, it can be between $30 and $40. So you can go to your music store or online and just order a single reed. Um, and that's really helpful. So um, the problem I see with a lot of students, if you're having a lot of reed problems, is they're not rotating your reeds. So um, typically... <laughs> You know, especially with my middle school and high school students, I'll see the reeds just like this in the case. So, you know, you play your reed, you take it out, and you put it back in this plastic holder. Um, that's going to cause the reed to warp, and it's not going to really work well <laughs> to show the warping over Facebook Live. But that just means the tip gets a little wavy, um, and it's not straight. So you want to keep your reeds in rotation. I have this um, case. Oops. <laughs> um, I just have, I think it's like... Diodario or Rico case and I just have eight reeds on rotation and you can see here I also have in a humidity pack which looks like these so you can get these online um, I think they're for like cigars <laughs> um, and that just keeps my reeds humid um, so if you don't want to do the whole maybe you're like oh that sounds overwhelming you can just have your reeds in like any case they also make these in like four cases or like to hold four reeds, you just go online and go reed case. Um, just some sort of case that holds your reed. I think this might have been like a little under $20. And if you don't want to get the humidity packs, which are also pretty inexpensive, um, if you just kind of buy them in bulk online, um, you can also just have like a little piece of a sponge um, that you can get wet that's in a, a plastic bag. Okay. So yeah, it's good to rotate your reeds regularly, otherwise they're going to get waterlogged um, and just like, you know, if you play on your reed too much, it's going to not last as much, right? Okay, so let's get into the working on your reeds part. So again, if you're just starting, I wouldn't really worry about getting into your reeds too much. I would just make sure you have a, a basic reed case, like four or eight that holds your reeds, um, just so you're not putting them in the plastic bag. Um, so this is going to be, I'm going to start with like the simplest step to work on your reeds. So like I said, the main problem people have with their reeds not working is the tip warping. So basically what this is, is like <laughs> the tip of this reed is going to be a little bit wavy. If you just look at your reed, you know, it's, it won't be completely flat or straight, which is obviously really important for our sound. Okay. And if anyone has questions while you're watching this, feel free to just comment. Um, Okay, so this is how I work on my reeds. I have a bunch of tools. So this is from Van Doren. It is a glass plate that has like kind of this like gritty stuff on the bottom that kind of functions as sandpaper. So um, if I see a reed and it's warped, I will just put it on here and I will sand it. Okay, so I'm just rubbing it back and forth. You can also do like a little figure eight motion here. Um, and that's going to make it play better. Uh, I also have, uh, this is like a little bit fancier. This is like, basically functions like a reed knife where I can work on the rails, which is the sides of the reeds. Um, I'll get into that in a second. I just don't want to over, <laughs> overload. I want to go kind of like basic to advanced of the reeds. So, okay. So what if you're like, Anna, I want to work on my reeds, but I don't want to buy an expensive glass plate from Van Doren or a fancy stick thing. Well, <laughs> what you can do is you can just take a plain, yes, it says tacit. <laughs> you can take a plain piece of like computer paper or notebook paper, place it on a flat glass surface or a table. 
So let's pretend this is going to be my flat surface, but I could also put it at my coffee table. And you can just put the reed on that flat surface and move it around that way. Um, so that's just going to fix the back of the reed so it's not as warped. Um, yeah, let's see if I can demonstrate it in action with a reed here. Um, so I'm going to take this reed that's been in my <laughs> case for a while. So it's gotten warped, right? Because I haven't played it for a while. So that the edges of the tip are a little wavy. Okay. I'm going to play it. It's going to sound pretty bad and stuffy. Just warning you. Okay. It's okay, but you can hear there's a little bit of stuffiness. Okay. So I'm just going to take my um, glass here and I'm just going to sand it. Very exciting stuff. You can do this while you're watching TV. That's what I do. Okay, and let's see if that worked. Okay, so that's a little bit clear. Um, so that should be pretty much enough if you're just really getting into this read stuff. Um, you know, I wouldn't I would just worry about keeping that uh, you know this part, the sanding it, keeping it flat for now. Now, if you want to get more advanced with it um, and you want to work on the sides of the reeds, I'll show you how to do that. Okay. So my reed is playing better than before, but it's still a little bit stuffy. Um, and it's also a pretty old reed too. I have to put mine through a new rotation, which I'm going to talk about how to do that. So you can test it by playing the sides of the reed. Do you hear how that side, um, the right side is a lot stuffier than the left side? Like it's more, you know, not sounding right. So what you can do is on the side that's stuffy, you can take your reed knife or reed stick and just shave some off the sides. So if you hold your reed up to the light, it should have a nice V or, um, I did it backwards, a V or heart shape. Um, and if that V or heart shape is uneven, that could be contributing to a stuffy sound. Um, so you can just kind of, and again, this is like getting a little bit more advanced. You can kind of scrape it with your knife, the sides here. If anyone has questions at any time, please comment. I will totally talk about them in my live video or if you're watching this after we've gone live. So good rule of thumb. You can always take more off the read, but you can't put <laughs> more on. <laughs> So you want to just be doing things really slow, and that's pretty much why I stopped working um, with my reed knife. Uh, I do have a reed knife, but it was just um, it was just a little bit more difficult for me to work with, so I prefer the Van Doren stuff. Okay, that sounds way better to me. So that was just like five minutes of me, I think less than five minutes, um, just doing the sides. So that's pretty much all I do for reed work. Okay, um, I'm going to talk about another reed tool I use. So this is the same for clarinet, sax, or whatever. I just had my clarinet today. I'm going to talk about another reed tool I use. Um, and then I'm also, then I'm going to show you how I put new reeds like through rotation. Um, okay, so also uh, what you could do is I mentioned that if you don't have a piece, you know, if you don't have a this plate or whatever, this is just easy for me. You can, again, just put a plain piece of paper on a table or a glass surface. Um, you can also use, okay, so what if you're like, ugh, I don't want to buy that fancy Van Doren stick. Also, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sponsored by Van Doren or anything. I just end up using a lot of their stuff. Um, you can have a piece of 600 grain sandpaper. So you can just buy this at your local sandpaper place, <laughs> Vidars or Fleet Farm. And um, you can use that as your you can put that on a table also um, and sand the reed generally when i'm using uh, sandpaper i like the tip of the reed the very top is very delicate so i keep that off the sandpaper as i'm sanding um, another thing you can do is you can take a tinier piece of sandpaper 
and use that kind of as your glass stick thing and just kind of go over the rails and also um, the back is a really common part to sand also. But yeah, I think it really made, I'm very pleased it made a huge difference in my read and I wasn't actually trying to. Okay, so the third fancy tool. Um, so because I'm playing so many instruments, I just kind of invested in these fancy tools, but I was doing fine without them for a while. The Reed Geek. Okay, you've probably heard of the Reed Geek before. It comes in this cool little package. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, the thing I like about this, plus the Van Dorn thing, is when I'm like flying or traveling, I can take it with. Um, before when I'm my Reed Knife, you know, you can't really like take that on a plane or anything. So the Reed Geek basically is this like, it's the Reed Geek Black Diamond. It's this like metal um, cubicle stick and you can use that essentially like a reed knife or uh, the Vendoran stick that I use. Basically, you'll just take an edge. There's directions on how to use this thing too. And you can scrape at the bottom or the rails of the reed. So usually when I'm doing all my reed adjusting, smoothing the back, and scrape at the bottom and the rails, which are the sides. And then you can hold it up to the light to see the heart of the reed. Mine's already looking much more V-shaped. Um, I don't really do work with the tip. It's very, very delicate. Um, and like I said, you can't really put part of the reed back on. Okay. Um, let's move on to, let me know if anyone has any questions about that. I'm going to move on to how I go through new reeds. Um, okay. So what I do when I'm going through new reeds, uh, I take like a whole box of reeds and I'm going to actually do this probably after this video. I will have um, a box of, here's my V12s, so I'll open them up. <laughs> Let's pretend this is a new read. And I mean, if you're in a pinch, and some people are cool with this, you can just play the read, stick the read right on the instrument and play it. Um, for long term, that's not so great, but you might notice your read is not sounding good after a while or it's getting waterlogged. Like if it's sounding stuffy and really hard to play, and it's like really, really wet, that means your reed is waterlogged. So I usually, what I do when I'm going through new reeds, so this is what I do. I take a cup of water. This is my Wisconsin cow mug <laughs> that my brother got for me. Very cool. It's very large, which is perfect for storing reeds. So I'll take like, I don't know, I'll, I'll really take the whole box. I'll take at least however many your reed case holds. So at least eight. Um, and I'll drop the reeds in the cup. Okay, so they're soaking. I leave them in there for 10 minutes. I set a timer. So then the reed is like very wet, right? And then I will leave it on a flat surface to dry. So I'll leave it on my coffee table um, or I'll leave it on, uh, some people have like glass plates they leave it on and I'll leave it to dry, which might, you know, it'll take a few hours to dry. Okay, so when that's done, then you're going to dunk it in the water again mm -hmm. <laughs> and leave it to dry again. So you're getting your reed, like you're soaking it in the water early because then the reed is going to warp and do all those things, um, you know, before you start playing and you're going to be able to work on it. Um, so then after that's dried out, then I will start working on the reed. I don't start working on a new reed right out of the box. Um, and there's many different opinions on how to do read. So maybe you've heard a different opinion this is what I've been doing um, and it's worked pretty well for me. So get a box of new reeds, just drop them all in the water, soak them for 10 minutes, take them out, let them dry for a few hours. When they're dry, soak them again, take them out, let them dry. And then I will start playing them on rotation and also working on them with my reed knife, sandpaper and glass plate. Um, okay, I think that's, we kind of got through a lot of stuff. Does anyone have any questions at all? Please just feel free to comment in the chat. I see we have some more viewers now. Um, yeah, but you know, if you're in a pinch and you're on a live gig and your read is really not working, um, you know, you can just take one out of the box. This is just for long-term stuff. So let me recap the levels of reads. Okay, so if you're a beginner or just starting, you're gonna wanna use a softer read. I recommend two or two and a half. Um, and the best way to do that is, uh, you know, if you want it, so the main brands that I recommend are Mandoran, Diodario, um, and Rico. When you're buying from like a mouthpiece manufacturer like Vandoran, 
um, or Bakun, you can go on their site and look at the, a chart and it'll tell you what kind of reed works best with the mouthpiece. So I just posted like the Vandoran sax mouthpiece thing in the chat. A lot of people don't know that exists. So that's a good starting point. Some mouthpieces you will use harder reeds than others. Um, that's just kind of how it is. I notice on tenor, I do use a lot softer reeds. That just works better for me. Okay. Um, then the second step is, okay, you uh, have been playing for a little bit. Um, the main thing is just keeping your reeds in rotation and not in the plastic case. So we talked about getting like a reed holder. I just have post-its marking. I put the dates that I put the reeds in here. Um, and a humidity pack. Uh, and then if you want to work on your reeds further, um, you can sand them either on, this is a Vandoran um, sanding thing. It's a, well, it's a glass plate uh, with a reed stick. Or you can also just have a flat surface with a piece of computer paper or sandpaper. And then the next step um, getting, after getting the back flat is you can work on your reeds either with a tool like the Reed Geek, so working on the back of the reed um, and smoothing the sides, so the, the rails. So when I was doing that earlier, here and here, and if you watch the video, it actually did make a pretty big difference in my sound, which I was happy about. Um, or your reed stick. And then um, just making sure to store them in the case. And I find it best to work on my reeds when they're dry. Um, yes. Okay. Diodario is Rico. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just using, um, I'm just using like Van Doren reeds. Um, but yeah, thanks for that, Dan. And then also like another common brand is Mitchell Lurie. Like people get really into what brand of reeds you use, but if you're just starting, like the important thing is just making a sound. <laughs> Don't get too into like blue box, gray box, red box, whatever, and try to buy the single packs of reeds. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about plastic reeds. Um, so a really good option for people is uh, plastic reeds, which are like a synthetic reed. They're a little bit more expensive, but they last longer. I believe the shelf life is about six months. Um, and the common maker of those is Legere. Um, so plastic reeds. I have used plastic reeds and I think they're good. I know some people who play exclusively on the synthetic reeds. Personally for me, I, uh, I really like the cane reeds on my B-flat clarinet and my saxophone. Um, I, I do use the plastic reeds on bass clarinet though, just because sometimes when I'm sitting in orchestra for a while and can't play, you know, uh, a cane reed is more likely to get warped just sitting there. When you do uh, buy a plastic reed, they tend to run a little bit harder. So if you normally play on a three, you're going to want to get like a two and a half leger. Um, and they usually play pretty decently. Um, so maybe try it out, especially if you're doing like a lot of pit gigging, like pit stuff or doubling. Um, I know some people really like the plastic reeds. And then obviously when you have the plastic reeds, um, you don't have to work on stuff. Yeah, that's awesome, Dan. Um, yeah, like I, I, I like the synthetic reeds and yeah, some people are like really down on them, but I think that's great, especially if you play a lot of instruments. Um, and the quality is always improving of them too. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. I, I really, it made a really big difference for me, my bass clarinet playing. Um, I haven't really liked them for saxophone. I did try them on alto and tenor, and I, I do prefer the cane reeds. Um, if anyone's a jazz musician, usually for jazz, so we tend to maybe not get into reeds as much as the classical musicians. I do both. Like when I'm playing clarinet and orchestra, I'm like constantly working on my reeds or for a recital. When I'm playing like a jazz gig, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, here's this reed I found in my case and it, <laughs> it tends to work out fine. Um, so again, it really just depends on how uh, in depth you want to go. Okay, uh, my video went a lot longer than I expected, but I think we talked about a lot of awesome reed stuff. Um, hopefully this helps you out. If you have any comments or questions to read, feel free to just comment and I'll address it later. Um, or yeah, or email me. Um, but thank you. Um, my previous teacher to Ms. Yeah, that's me, Ms. Delson, had a box of Ricos. Yeah, so like sometimes when I'm on a gig, 
I will have like a box of soft to read. So for me, that's like a blue box three. Um, and I'll just pull it out sometimes, you know, never know if you have a read emergency. Um, and yeah, I know Mike uses those superior reads, which are kind of hard to get. Um, but he gets a great sound on those. Okay, awesome. I'm going to end it for today. But thanks. There was a lot of activity on this call. So that's great. Um, so happy read making. Also, um, <laughs> one word of advice. Uh, I'm really bad at you don't want to be like drinking coffee and soda and stuff. Well, it's going to break down your read further. If you are going to drink coffee or tea, don't put creamer in it. Okay. Um, my repair person was not very happy with me the last time I went in for my appointment. Um, so sorry, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll be back with another live video next week. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see covered, just let us know. Bye.